Olá, Tiago Faria, Tiago Faria.pt, bem-vindos a mais um episódio aqui do podcast do Tiago, estamos no episódio número 58. Hoje tenho uma convidada especial, ela chama-se Kate Buck Jr., ela é uma social media manager e CEO da KBJ Online, que é uma agência basicamente de gestão e consultoria de redes sociais, mas também é fundadora da Social Media Pro, ou basicamente um curso online para profissionais de social media, que ela vai falar um pouco, um pouco mais, e ela também gosta muito de Portugal, que nós também vamos ter que falar sobre isso. Hey, hello, Kate. Welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for coming. Hello. Thank you for inviting me. I'm excited. So cool. Yes. Yeah, so I made a quick uh, introduction about who you are uh, in mm -hmm. Portuguese, but you don't, wouldn't mind sharing a bit more who you are, what you do? Sure. Um, yeah. Like you mentioned um, in your introduction, I picked up on a few things, <laughs> like I said, since I've spent a little bit of time in Portugal. But um, yeah, uh, I am a social media manager. I have been doing this for a really long time. I started actually in online in 2006, um, but wow. I founded my own company and started doing services for other people when I on my own in 2009. I know we're going to talk about that a little mm -hmm. bit later. And I've just kind of been a student and studying the art of, uh, you know, social media and for business um, ever since. And I also um, train social media managers. So that's one of the things I started doing a long time ago was um, as I was learning how to start my own business and be a social media professional, I started mm -hmm. teaching and training other people how to do the same in case they wanted to quit their job or they wanted to earn extra income. And so, yeah, that's pretty much what I do still to this day. And I love to go back to the childhood of my, my guests. Would you mind reflecting a bit with us? What, what, kind, of, what kind of child you were? If, if you had ambitions about regarding this kind of entrepreneurial adventures, if you could expand a bit on that. Actually, I didn't. When I was a kid, I trained very seriously to be a, a ballet dancer. So my aspirations when I was growing up was to be a performer. I often say that it does correlate now because I, uh, I just perform, but I do it online. Um, so I still have a bit of that performer um, in me, I, you know, as a child, I did all the dancing and the acting and the singing and, um, you know, all of that. My college degree is in dance. Uh, and when I started online, I was teaching ballet, but you, you teach ballet mostly in the afternoons when kids are out of school, you know, in the evenings. And I needed a job during the day um, to kind of make cool. ends meet. And that's when I slowly started working online as a personal assistant because I needed to earn some extra of money. Um, so, yeah, no, I was going to be a ballet teacher. I was going to be a, a big famous <laughs> ballerina. And uh, at what point does, does this social media thing come to your mind? I mean, what, what excited you the most when you first discovered it? And what made you think that, okay, this is going to be my life? Well, I randomly got hired for a job that involved some social media. So I had no idea uh, what I was getting myself into, but um, <laughs> these were back in the MySpace days. Um, so I did have a MySpace uh, profile and I did... Um, I did, I did, I just really enjoyed it. And when I got late, that was a corporate job. And when they, Facebook came around, we were sort of building our own social media platform. And when Facebook came around, it became obvious that um, we weren't gonna make it unless we got a large influx of capital to do that. And um, we, and we did it. So when I got laid off, I just kept thinking to myself, I really enjoyed what I was doing. Um, I liked hanging out, I liked talking to people online and um, uh, others noticed that I was good at it. And so I had no idea, but I was just searching online for what other type of jobs I could get doing this. Little did I know it was going to be like the future of the internet. Mm -hmm. And I was just kind of, that's what excited me at the time was I enjoyed it. I got to work from home and I wanted to find another job where I could keep doing that. That's, that's brilliant. And, and what do you think uh, differentiated you from, you know, the average social media manager that there is? I mean, what do you think you could do a bit better than ma most of the people around you? <laughs> um, I think two, two things, and it's been a con like progress over time. I would say in the beginning, you know, I was learning and teaching myself and, um, And maybe that's one of the things is that okay. I just I really dove in. I was very curious and I, I didn't want to not know how to do something. So I would try mm. and test all the apps and see what worked and what didn't. And then when people would tweet or post and say, well, what app is best for 
X, Y, Z, I would always have the answer because I would have tried it. Well, I tried this app and I tried this app, you know, this one's good for this and this one's good for this. Mm. So I don't know. It depends. What are you looking for? And that's really, um, that was really kind of in the beginning. Now um, I would say, um, I mean, maybe quite the same thing is I feel like I'm really a learner at heart. I'm a mm. student. And when people call me an expert, it's been a long time. It, it, I've just recently come to where I embrace um, <laughs> the, the, the term for myself. You know, sometimes we're our harshest critics. And mm -hmm. so even though other people okay. call me that, you know, it's been a, a hard thing for me to embrace. But I think because I've always considered myself a learner, I'm always learning, which means, um, you know, I'm all, I always have new, mm -hmm. new information. Um, I also... I think what I what I was gonna say was um, early on I embraced the world of internet marketing. There are people that were building really big email lists and doing webinars mm -hmm. and selling products, and I was exposed to that world early on in my career. And a lot of times when people think about social media, they think about posting on social media and getting engagement and you know how many comments or likes and shares followers. how many followers do i have and i think those numbers are important but my clients have always demanded of me to show a result in their business of course. and so i think over time what i've done is really infuse the idea of how do i continuously grow my social media with the likes and the followers and the shares and the engagement and all of that but at the same time translate that over into an actual business um, result and I, so I think bridging those two worlds together is really what I do best. Yeah, exactly. We, I think the we, we differs yourself completely from the rest because most social media managers worry mostly about you know bringing engagement, comments, followers, and not as much the the the, the part that actually matters for businesses, right? So that's it's um it's a it's a it's a different parts it's different parts of the brain that are needed. That somebody that's mm -hmm. going to be really good at one is not necessarily going to be good at the other, or even if you want to say attracted to learning that uh, part, someone either really likes talking and sharing and being with people and other people like data metrics, analytics, and numbers. So it, but you have to have both. They, they, it's like sales and marketing that you need both in order for a business to thrive. That's awesome. So going back again to 2009, it was the, the year you founded KVJ online. Uh, can you talk a bit about the, the three months prior to starting that business? What, what, what was in your mind? What were the main obstacles? Just to share a bit with the audience. Yeah. Well, I did share a little bit about it. I was getting laid off and I begged my yes. company to give me three months to find another job. So KBJ Online, you know, while I started, I had my very first client on January 9th, 2009. My actual last day at my job was yes. December 31st. 2008. So I didn't even actually fully f decide that I was having a business and being KBJ online until about nine months later until September. Mm -hmm. So in the three months leading up to January, I had gotten the pink slip. So I knew I was getting <laughs> laid off and I wasn't going to have a job. And my boss was really great. She said, you know, spend half of your time cleaning up your job and writing a procedure manual and all of these mm -hmm. things, which has later come to be very helpful uh, that I know how to write procedures and processes. But she also said, spend the rest of the time trying to find a job. And that's literally how KBJ Online really was good. born is really I networked. I followed everyone on Twitter that I could. I engaged with them. I shared their blog posts. I read, I learned, I went to the meetups to meet mm. people in person. I applied for the jobs. I learned as much as I could. I just really immersed myself in the world, I had no choice. I was, had just recently been married. I had two stepkids. My mm -hmm. mom uh, is elderly and she lived with us at the time. And there was just no way I could afford to not have an income. So I was actually doing all of this in effort to get a regular job, not to start a business. And what happened was, is I got a, I, I would take client work starting in January. I started taking client work where people were paying me for this little job or that little <laughs> job or clean out their spam dms on twitter i literally got paid to be somebody's just <laughs> assistant and clean out spam dms on twitter and i didn't care i was scrappy yeah, whatever it scrappy took person then and then what happened is it just started to build over time and it was really around september of that year where i thought to myself hmm well i could kind of stop looking for a job and maybe i could just keep 
getting clients and doing this full time because mm-hmm. I was starting to make about as much money as I had at my job um, <laughs> in, in my business. So that's when the light bulb went off and went, okay, maybe we should just keep doing this and stop looking for a job. That's awesome. That's a brilliant transition mm-hmm. there. And what do you feel were the main mistakes you made during those first, like a lot few months, it was almost a year of a transition, right? Mm-hmm. Well, what lessons do you do you took for, for your future and present? Yeah, I will tell you, I even still to this day, um, it's, it's a weakness of mine because I spend my time a lot with my clients. And so I didn't do a good job immediately of the internet marketing type things, like of building my own email list or putting out my own blog content or my own YouTube videos. I was very focused on doing, even to this day, if you go to my blog or you, you know, my It's like the doctor syndrome, right? The doctor tells you not to smoke, but then in the background he smokes. Yes, exactly. (laughs) Yeah, or the cobbler's children don't have any shoes. Yes. And and really I I teach to my social media managers um, and to people that are getting started that that is so important. Blogging is so important. If I had been blogging for the last 10 years, or started a YouTube channel 10 years ago. I mean, and I was building my email list. So I didn't do the things for me um, because I was starting a service provider business. I was always doing them for others. That's great advice. That's great advice to start creating your assets for as soon as possible, right? Because you'll treat yourself as a client, treat yourself as a client. You put yourself on your schedule just as if you were, you were hired by somebody else to do it. Exactly. And that will probably help you to show, look, what I've done with my personal brand. I can do the same with you, right? It will probably even help you more. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's awesome. So, and a year later, uh, in 2007, right, you started Social Media Pro. So you learned how to become a social media manager. You learned all the pros and cons, obstacles, and then you suddenly decide, okay, I have a lot to do to help other people that are in the same situation, right? How, How did that happen? Yeah. Yeah. After about 18 months. So, um, really we're, I'm, I don't, whenever this airs, but I'm really coming up on the 10 year anniversary of what was the original social media pro. It was actually at the urging of a friend who saw what I was doing. Um, I had applied for a job with him back in the early days when I was scrappy and trying to get a job and he didn't hire me. He passed on me for another candidate. Oh, but we awesome. remained connected and he referred me to a couple of clients and then and then I didn't see him for a period of time and we met up again at a conference called South by Southwest oh, which yeah. happens in Austin every year it's a big interactive festival and uh, here I am waving hi to people taking photos doing all those things and he was a very successful entrepreneur and yet no one knew who he was and yet they're pulling me out of line to take pictures and do all this <laughs> stuff and he's going What's what going is going on? And I was like, well, I've spent this year, I've built my brand. I'm very active online. I have a lot of clients. Um, I'm making, you know, really good. I'm making at this point, I'm making more money than I was making at my job. Um, mm-hmm. So I'm doing, I'm doing so much better. I'm approaching, a, a, you know, the, the, what, what is the elusive $10,000 a month, which seems elusive. to be everyone's goal number, you know, to get to. And I'd done it in about a year. And he said to me, wow, that's really impressive. I think you should teach other people how to do what you did. And like I said, he was a very successful entrepreneur. Um, You guys, if you guys follow online training, um, you may have heard of him before. His name is Ryan Dice of a site called Digital Marketer. I've been trying and to so get digi- into the podcast for a while. He's not answering me yet. So He's not trying. answering. Well, <laughs> then I'll, I'll forward it on it and I'll let him know that we need to drop him <laughs> today. So he was yeah. the one. So it was his business where he said, I think if you put together a training teaching people how to start a business, being a social media manager, I could sell that for you. And that's really when Social Media Pro was born. I, I taught people how to get a client, um, maybe how to write a contract, what tasks you should do for the client, how to run your business. It's just a little small thing, but it has endured all of these years because it's still a skill and a business that people, even in this time where we're recording this podcast in the middle of a pandemic, having online skills and being able to work from anywhere and kind of having some control over your income is more important than ever. So this is this is not something I remember people telling me it was a fad. Social media was a fad and mm. I don't get used to this job. I wasn't going to have it very long and, and look at it now. It's like, it's it literally the only way that we have to connect with each other and chat is through social media. So 
had definitely has withstood the test of time. Definitely, that's, that's really good. Um, and I'm just curious, uh, how was the transition? So you, you, you thought about helping other social media managers, but um, what kind of product did you idealize initially? Was it already an online course or did you start with coaching one-on-one? How did the process? Yeah, uh, it was a bit of both. We started with an online course. So I pre-recorded some videos and then okay. of course had like um, some temp my templates and documents. I included everything that I didn't feel like I knew very much. So I put everything I had in there, which is not <laughs> smart as a product owner because now I have nothing else to sell them next in the process. I've sold you everything right in the beginning, but we did have some coaching calls after that. So when you signed up, you also got access to, access to um, some weekly coaching calls from there. Social media managers would reach out to me because they would want one-on-one -on -one coaching mm -hmm. uh, for their particular situation. But um, it didn't, it did, I didn't start out as a coach okay. uh, that way. I, I did it over time because I knew how to do it for myself teaching somebody else was the next step. And then the third step would be learning from teaching other people that they all are in different various places. Mm -hmm. They're in different places than I am, or they had different skill sets than I do. And so in the beginning, I wouldn't have had the, the understanding of how to help somebody who wasn't in my exact situation. But after hearing their stories and listening to them over time, I could sort of start piecing together, oh, uh, I remember one person that reached out, I coached directly, you know, she had a lot of experience running political campaigns. So she had, that had been her job prior and now she was trying to do social media management. So it was like, okay, well, how can we take your experience and help you use that to start your business? Whereas that would not have been applicable for me or for other students. Okay. Makes sense. Makes yeah. Completely sense. So the coaching um, came later. Perfect. So now uh, turning a bit the, the view to the uh, business owner side of things. So what do you feel are the main mistakes you see business owners making when it comes to, to their own social media? What do they, what are their main uh, beliefs and mistakes they make? Um, it's a good question. Um, there's a lot. Uh, <laughs> I think the challenge is, is that there's so much information out there and a lot is free and it's coming from a lot of different sources. And truthfully, everyone sort of has their own opinion mm. about how to do social media. And it doesn't necessarily mean just because there's differing opinions that anybody's wrong, um, but you really do need to kind of pick one path of someone or some system that has been successful and mm. stick with it. You can't really piece them together. I think one, one thing I was just saying yesterday that has been challenging for me with clients is that, um, everyone wants to be real creative right from the beginning. So I think the creativity part is at the beginning, but you don't know what you're doing yet. So I think it's first to learn what to do and how to do it and then be creative afterwards. Like do something that's already has shown proven results and then go get creative later. Mm. So besides that, what I what, like I spoke to, a potential client yesterday and they're really raring to go and want to do social media, but the back end, the infrastructure of their business is not ready. When I talk to business owners online, they can't tell me what the lifetime value of their customer is. Mm -hmm. Like how much money will they make over for, you know, over the course of a lifetime when they acquire a new customer, I need to know that information because now I know how much money I can spend to get them a new customer. So they don't know the inner workings of their business. They really don't know how much money they're making and from how many different people <laughs> they don't know. Um, they don't have the online infrastructure set up on their site to fully accurately capture people, but they just keep hearing from, from their phone and from everywhere, do social media and start a YouTube channel and you've got to be blogging and why aren't you on Twitter? And now it's TikTok and whatever. <laughs> and so they feel stressed and compelled to be doing these things, but they don't, have the actual business the side of it set up. So it's a waste of time and effort most of the time, because even if you do get a big audience and you get lots of followers, and even if they do, you do well and have lots of engagement. So what, what happens after that? Everything else has to get built and be in place first so that you have some place to send people once all this dialogue and conversation is happening online. So you're basically a business strategist at the beginning, right? You consult the clients to on their own business first of all, and then okay, let's try to capitalize. Because all social media, all social media is is an is a tool for amplification. Yeah, exactly. It takes whatever you're already doing and makes it louder. 
So we really need to start. And people think that social media, I call it like they think of it like a magic diet pill that if you just do social media, that their business is all of a sudden going to work, but you, it doesn't, the business has to work on its own and then we can use social media to feed it new customers. But if the business doesn't work, feeding it new customers is not going to make it work. It's actually likely That's going to make true. it worse, much, much worse. <laughs> well, what other things should a business owner know before, you know, when approaching the social media? So first of all, they have to take care of their own business strategy. What are the two things you could uh, enumerate that they have to really know? Um, the other things that people should realize is that, um, that number one, social media is an investment, both in time and, uh, and in money. money. So in, in time and resources, you know, creating like social, when we got started in social media a long time ago, it was much easier to just throw something up and it didn't matter. It was a tweet. It was 140 characters. It didn't take a lot of like asset creation. You didn't have to work very hard. You can put a tweet and put a link to an ugly landing page and it would do something. But over 10 years, the, the demand from consumers has evolved. The aesthetic of the eye, what images people like, um, um, what kind of tricks they will no longer fall for, you know, those types of things. So you, mm. you actually have to be good and try at marketing. So you have to spend, you have, need resources. You need to create video. You need to create good graphics and images. You need to work on your wordsmithing. You can't just throw it together. And that is it. that's an investment. Like, mm. and, and to figure out, which one is going to work, you might have to create 10 images, 20 images or something, and then whittle down and narrow it down to the ones that work best. And so most people think because of what they read online that it's gonna be free or it's gonna be easy or it's not gonna take any time. And that's just not true. This is, this is a legitimate a aspect of your business. This is a marketing channel and it needs to be treated as such. So expect going in think about, are you ready? How much money do you have to set aside to, to support not the creation, but who's actually going to do it? Are you going to hire an agency? Are you hiring someone in house? Like you, you, you know, that you need a person. And then the second one is around, is around budget and money as well is that not only do those things cost money, but it's such a crowded marketplace to be entering that you almost always have to have an ad spend budget set aside. Mm -hmm. So you really need to understand how much money that this is actually an actual investment. This is opening up a new channel for your business and you need to be willing to spend money in order to make, and you, of course me as a social media manager, I would be saying that you might be, you might be thinking, well, of course she's going to say that, but it's just a, it's just facts. If you're going to DIY and do it yourself and use, um, you know, your design skills when you're not a designer and you're not a copywriter <laughs> and you can't build a web page, but you think you're going to do it yourself to save time and money, just know that you're going to suffer in the end. And the same thing with the choice between being organic, what we call organic, which is like your free social media tasks versus running an ad, people shy away. Oh, no, no, I don't want to run ads. I don't want to spend money. I just want to see if it works for free. Well, I can post a five posts a day, 10 posts a day, but if no one sees it, we could spend months doing free marketing and have no results. Whereas I could save myself some time so, by spending some money on an ad and I can have results in 24 hours. So which one costs less? is a question you have to answer. A uh, lots of times the ad route is actually more cost effective, even though you're taking the brunt of spending money up front, it actually saves you money in the long run because you get a, a better, you get a result faster than you do by wasting three months potentially doing organic marketing. It's, it's Although I don't of, want you to sorry. say that you still have to do both. So yes. I don't want to leave you with the impression that one oh, is better than the other. You do have to do both, but they, it, they, they both take time and they, they both take, take money. It's a, it's, a, it's a real investment in your business. I think business owners that get scared off by all the things you just said, it means that they probably don't value much their time, right? And they, they're not probably ready for this kind of... Kind of uh, new, it's usually new, because they don't know their numbers. It's because yeah, they don't yeah. know that every customer... Look, if you are a, um, a, a coffee shop, if you have a coffee shop, then what is the value of getting one new person in the door? If they, if they live down the street from you and they like your coffee, they may come every day yeah, for 
for the next 10 years of their life or whatever. And they buy that $5, whatever cup of coffee for every day for 10 years. It, it makes sense to say, well, how much money am I willing to spend to get, to mm -hmm. get that investment? Um, it's, if you're a tour company and you, somebody books a tour with you and it's a, a you know, $500 tour for the day. Well, a portion of that money, $50, you know, you, if you know your numbers, then you know what your profit is, you know, how much or not, your, you know, how much your cost is to, to actually deliver the tour. You know what the cost is to just run your business that's baked in there. Then you should also know that you have what's left over. How much of that what's left over are you willing to split into spending on marketing to get the customer in the door? And then you and then your profit is what's left over. Most business owners don't know those numbers on a per customer basis. And if you did, it would make a lot of sense. Oh, I make five hundred dollars on a customer. I'm willing to spend. $50 of that per customer to make $500. I'll do, hey, if I told you, I'll give you 50, uh, if uh, you give me $50 and I'll give you 500 back every $50 you give me, I'll give you 500 back. How many times would you give me $50? Yeah. <laughs> All day definitely, long, yeah, right? Indefinitely. You, indefinitely. You would give me as many $50 as you can because I would keep giving you 500 back. And that's what it, when you actually do know your numbers, this isn't scary. It doesn't feel like a cost or an expense. It's an investment, it's an investment because you know what you're getting back. That's a brilliant answer. I think that the answer will help a lot of people. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and now yeah. let's turn, out, turn our dishes to the social media management side of things. Okay. So if a person, I bet there's a ton of people now right now wanting to be social media managers uh, as, as solopreneurs or freelancers, um, how can one become a social media manager uh, that others are willing to pay? You know, there's someone that's really differentiated from the rest and that makes things. Yeah. Happen. Well, I mean, it starts with the willingness to learn and finding, you know, a place to learn. As I mentioned, mm -hmm. there's, there's lots of resources out there. Of course, I'm biased. Uh, but <laughs> I think the best place to learn is with social media pro, but I think that you do need a very holistic education. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, um, and then you need some experience. So once you feel like you, know a little bit about what you're doing, the next thing to do would be to get an internship somewhere or offer to do a favor mm -hmm. for a friend or even start your own little side project. You know, like I have a little, um, a little side Instagram that I do to test. It's around salsa dancing because um, nice. I love salsa dancing and it's fun. So I set up an Instagram, I set up a little web page, and this is a place where it's just fun for me. Um, but if I were just getting started, I could actually use that as a portfolio piece to say, well, I post these things and then people check out my website and, you know, they watch my videos, or whatever it is. I could show the whole process by doing a project. I have students that do this maybe for their church or for um, a volunteer organization. Maybe they love working with animal rescue. And it's just really easy to raise your hand and say, I'm willing to help out with social media as a way to gain experience. Or a lot of times people have a wife or a husband or someone in their family that has a small business. Hey, let me help out with your social media. So that starts to get you experience. And I think from learning to having some beginning experience, that's when the doors start opening and you really start making the, the connections that you need to make that then allows you to really go out and speak confidently to a potential client about the services um, that you offer. And it really is an ongoing process that that learn, get a client, learn some more, get a bigger client, learn some more. You know, mm -hmm. it, it ha that's what has happened for me over the course of, of, of 10 years is learn this new piece, make sense. Ooh, now I can offer that as a service. Ooh, learn this. And offer and just continues to grow. So you start with smaller clients or you start with the ones that you're comfortable with and then you just continue to grow um, the more that you learn. That's brilliant. And uh, what do you wish you knew about social media management when you first started out other than that you need to have a course and you need to learn the basics first? Uh, what did what you learn? What do I wish recently? I knew about social media management? I think I wish I knew uh, as... I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't know anything about business really. Um, no. you know, I was learning as I went, I think I'll say, I'll answer it this way. The, the place I've struggled the most is in, is in scaling, growing, hiring okay. my team members and, um, 
and really being able to provide the service that I can do 100% um, without me being the one to do mm. it. So I've always stayed, I, I have grown a few times to, you know, what I consider a larger agency where I had 20 or mm -hmm. so clients. Um, but I didn't really enjoy that as much and I didn't feel like I was really good at it. So I wish I was better at mostly higher, mostly around hiring. Mm -hmm. It's been a place that I've really struggled hiring my team. So instead I've just kept, always kept it small. Mm -hmm. What I've done instead is over time, I charge more and more for the things that I do <laughs> to grow the company, but I still keep a small handful of clients and a small team. Exactly. Self-awareness, you know exactly about <clears throat> your strengths, so you, you bet on them. That's, that's perfect. Okay, Kate, we're right, getting to the end of this interview, but I still have a couple mm -hmm. more, more personal questions. So if you, okay. if you keep, think with me, if in the past five years you, you created a new habit that drastically improved your life, either professionally or personally, it could be either or. Meditation. Boom. There you go. Meditation. Uh, I start. I went to a workshop uh, five years ago, actually, exactly, with doctor, a guy named Dr. Joe Dispenza. Um, he teaches meditation, and um, I, I wanted to learn more about it, and um, it has made definitely uh, improved my life the greatest That's of any awesome. skill. Perfect. You're learned. not the first one to say so. It's, I think it's really something that I should include in my life. At least. Plenty of signs of it. Um, and who do you follow online for advice, inspiration on kind of social media, digital marketing, business? Mm -hmm. Anyone that you mm -hmm. still follow nowadays? So many folks. Um, uh, I really love uh, following a guy named Justin Brook uh, from a company Justin called Brooke. Ad Skills. Um, <laughs> he's br a br brilliant. And a guy named Sean Vossler. Okay. has a company called Increase Academy. He's a brilliant copywriter and designer. Those are, those are two people. Uh, Ryan Stuman, of course, um, was a student of mine who has gone on to far surpass <laughs> me in business. And he's just, um, his insights, he's just, he's very candid and he's brilliant. I love how he has built his tribe. Um, who else do I learn from? I sort of watch what everybody does to a certain degree. Um, my mentor is still uh, one of my original people that I met in the beginning. I mentioned Ryan Dice as the CEO of Digital Marketer. He had a business partner named Perry Belcher, who continues to remain a mentor um, of mine that I, I learn from, from regularly. Those are the people that I follow very consistently because I, I love always learning. Uh, from them, but I watch everybody from Gary Vaynerchuk, um, <laughs> see what he's doing always. I keep an eye on Lewis Howes and Amy Porterfield. Like everybody sort of has their own little flavor. And I love, um, I love Pat Flynn and Neil Patel, I think also put out very great information. Both of those guys. Um, <laughs> yeah, those are my you really are on Friendly social media. People. You're not just practicing it. You really are present and you follow people. That's, that's great. Uh, yes. And what about, what about books? Uh, if you had to choose one about any uh, topics, could you recommend any? Um, let's see. Let me open my, <laughs> let me open my Kindle here. <laughs> um, one of my favorite books is, uh, it's not going to be on here, but it's called The Three Laws of Performance. Um, Three laws. Three laws of performance. And that is a book that I go back to quite often. Um, I, who is, I'm trying to see who is the author. Steve Zaffron. Yes, yeah, Steve Zaffron. Is, okay. um, I, really, I, I really get a lot out of that book. Um, let's see. What do I... Um, be, becoming supernatural. Dr. Joe's book is, I highly recommend that mm -hmm. in terms of, um, I highly recommend that book. Um, gosh, all my books now you can see they've, they've changed, um, over, mm -hmm. over time mm -hmm. from business, from business books to mostly personal development type stuff and really around meditation. Um, yeah, hold on. I, I, uh, no specific book on social media, right? You don't, uh, 
You know, I've had a hard time finding, I really should write it. Um, I have yes. a hard time finding <laughs> a book on social media. I really like some of the books um, that came out um, in the beginning, like, um, Oh my gosh. Uh, books, Chris Brogan had a book, uh, Chris, the books by Chris Brogan and Julian Smith that were out a long time ago. I, I do follow Gary B. He writes very succinctly, Jab, 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 Right mm. Hook is a great um, book. Um, these are more about uh, Seth Godin, um, any, you know, any of mm. Seth Godin's books I think have been really good. They're really more about creating a culture and creating a tribe. They're, mm. they're less like tactical implementation of social media and more about, um, more about how to, how to build a tribe. And, 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 yeah. and so the, a lot of the, you know, now there's a lot of more tactical. Um, I remember reading one of my first books I read was um, uh, Naked Conversations. And it was really just about being authentic online and how to, hmm. um, you know, how to be, how to be transparent in a world, you know, in a world where this was now, you know, the norm. So these are the types of, I'm just looking through one more time. Um, one, one, I'll also look at my audible real quick. I'll just, I know I'm missing something. This is probably, yeah. this is the one question I didn't, obviously did not um, it's fine, fully prepare I'll put, for. Uh, I'll put them all in the uh, descriptions. I have, I did get a lot of, um, I did get a lot out of also, um, where did it just go? The Practicing Mind. It was a, a kind of a habit building book, discipline, and that's probably one of my weakest areas. I, from a business <laughs> perspective, I also, we revolutionized one of my client's companies based on a book called Traction by Gino Wickman. Okay. That was an excellent read. Traction. And got it yep i think those are oh duh that's the one i've been missing the whole time the miracle morning and i was going to say tribes tribes by seth godin um <sighs> but the mir the miracle morning by hal elrod morning practices morning rituals that's where the meditation comes in the self-discipline mm -hmm. stuff comes in creating your day getting your exercise in setting yourself up for a successful day the miracle morning is a great um it's a great read yeah, I think yet. you covered a ton of points, uh, different different areas of development. That's awesome. I'm always reading. That's my that's my. I'm I'm always traveling, so I've always got my Kindle and my. my I can tell you can barely Kindle. find your books on Kindle anymore. I know. I yeah, just gotta keep scrolling, keep scrolling. <laughs> okay, okay. To reach the end, how, how can people know more about you? Uh, what you'd like? To uh, mostly, people follow me online on any of the channels, uh, Kate Buck Jr. And uh, you can find out more about my services that I provide and all of that at kbjonline.com. That's, that's an awesome uh, domain name, KBJ. And oh, I, love it. I totally forgot. You could also check out Social Media Pro. Uh, exactly. Uh, my, 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 uh, the URL to my page there is socialmediapro.me. You can also check out socialmediapro.com as well. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Kate. It was really a pleasure. You really added a lot of value here. Thank you so much for your Thank presence. you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. E pronto, chegamos ao final da entrevista número 58 aqui do podcast. Espero que tenham gostado. Acho que trouxemos aqui bastante valor, quer seja um empreendedor, dono de um negócio, ou quer seja um, uh, alguém que esteja interessado em começar a, a fornecer serviços de, de redes sociais, social media. Acho que foi muito valioso. Se gostou do vídeo, por favor, deixe o seu gosto, subscreva o canal para ver mais futuros vídeos. Muito obrigado pelo seu tempo. Até à próxima.